So now we're all connected up, Simon. Um, I know that there's some software that allows us to explore all of the functionality of these motors. Perhaps you can run us through some of that. Yeah, we'll run through some examples uh, and show you the software. So this is our Drive Studio software. Um, this comes supplied with the motor kit. Um, we've just added an RS-485 uh, and a USB connector into my laptop. Again, all this comes with the kit itself. So basically I'll run through, this is what the software does. So starting up, we can now connect to the motor. We can start communicating, start interrogating it. So we're communicating we're now connected. RS-485? Yes, we've okay. now connected to the motor. Um, we know we've connected, it tells us the part number, it tells us the motor type. Um, we also have a range of uh, values that we can now start monitoring um, and start interrogating the motor. So, simple terms with the position of the motor, I'll go into a bit more detail later, but it has an absolute uh, resolution encoder, so we know exactly the position. We can start monitoring speed, current draw, we can start monitoring digital inputs, digital outputs. Uh, we've also got the status register, which is basically the error codes. So again, there's a number of error codes, so we can see what's happening if there's any problems. We've got the temperature of the motor, and we've also got the 0 to 10 volt input, um, which at the moment is, is wound up on my controller. So I can turn that down, so we can actually see the 0 to 10 and what okay. voltage we're putting in. Also tells me the mode that the motor is in. Again, I'll explain this a little bit more as we move through the demonstration. So yeah, so we're all connected, um, and we can start running the motor through the software. Okay. Um, a lot of this again is all in the quick start guide, so there's uh, all the modes and a couple of examples which I'll run through. So simple mode, we can start running it in demonstration, I can start running the motor left and right directly through the software. Yeah, so if you uh, hold it, grab hold it runs it nice and slow because it's, it's in a demo mode so it runs really slowly. But basically by connecting left or right on the software I can run the motor clockwise or anti-clockwise. Okay. So simple functionality left and right. We also have a very simple uh, position mode, so rather than just running it forwards or backwards, we can determine the position or the distance which we want the motor to travel. Right. So as I explained, um, we have a absolute resolution encoder built into, built into the electronics, and um, this has 65,535 counts per revolution, so it's quite accurate. This particular motor is an 84.8 to 1 ratio, right. so by adding the ratio to the number of counts, I can do one complete revolution. Quick arithmetic will tell me the number is 5,557,368. So if I add this number in, this should now give me one full revolution of the motor. Oh. So again, motor's enabled, motor's ready. So we can run the motor and we will get one full revolution. The slowest motor. <laughs> the tension is powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it stopped in the right place. And there we go. So we've done one, one revolution. So, really simple. Um, the inputs and outputs have changed, the speed's been changing, um, and the input, so it's been telling us what we've been doing. So, really simple. Again, just the next stage from running it through the box. We're now doing simple operations, but we can start monitoring, we can start seeing what it does. So the next stage from there is we can start customising the motor. Um, there are over 80 different parameters on the motor which you can change, um, and this software okay. enables us to change all of those. So we can now read the motor. So this tells us, so this is a factory set motor, so this is how it comes okay. out of the factory. So default settings. And we can start changing things from here, customising it. We can write it down to the motor, into the short-term memory, so as we're testing, as we're developing, we also have a save function, so once you're happy with your testing, you save it, and that stores it permanently into the EEPROM on the motor. So obviously, once we've disconnected and everything's taken away, the program is stored on the motor, the motor will always do the same functionality. There is a factory reset button on there as well, which is always useful, yep. so we can go back <laughs> and we can clear it back to factory settings yeah. if, we, uh, if we're not happy with what we've done. Um, you can't do any damage, the motor will always try and protect itself, so if you enter a value, which is it's, it's not possible, um, the motor will protect itself and won't let you do it, so you can't really do any damage. So what I'll do is I'll run through a couple of more detailed examples just to show you what we can start doing with okay. the functionality. So motor comes with default drive sets, which are position mode, velocity mode, current mode. I'm going to do a velocity and just basically expand on the, the factory mode um, which we were running earlier through the, through the controller. Okay, so you've got a sort of a, 
movement curve there for acceleration, speed, and deceleration. Yes. So that just enables me to, um, I can now start changing um, parameters. So I can start changing the three fixed speeds that we saw earlier. So mm -hmm. we had this, the factory defaults. I can start changing the acceleration and deacceleration at startup in both clockwise and anti-clockwise direction and start just changing various parameters within it. So what we'll do here, um, we'll put it onto correct mode. Oh, there you go, it's protecting, protecting itself. itself. Yeah, I'm trying to change parameters <laughs> while the motor is enabled, so obviously it won't let me. So we'll try again. So we'll read the settings at the moment. Yeah, it's still set to demo mode because we've been doing demos, so we'll take it out of demo mode. Okay, we'll read the motor. So, yeah, so this is in mode 11, which is the, the default velocity mode. Um, at the moment, as I said, we've got the, the fixed speeds, which you saw earlier, mm -hmm. 1,000, 4,000, and 10,000 RPM. So we can now start changing these figures just by just typing the new numbers. So we'll go to, for example, 500. and 5,000. So we've now changed fixed speeds. We write that to the motor that is now stored temporarily on the motor. So okay. while I'm testing, we can do that. If I want to keep that permanently, I'll click the save buttons. We'll leave it for now um, until we're happy with all the changes. But we can play around with that um, without permanently writing it. Yes, that? so that's not done. Okay. Even if we store it down there, we can still overwrite it. Once it's stored, it's not stored permanently. You can overwrite through the software and it's stored until you overwrite it. When it's in temporary memory, it's stored until you remove power basically from the motor. Okay. What I'll also do is change the acceleration and deacceleration um, setting. We'll just do it in the clockwise direction, just so you can do the diff see the difference between. Uh, oh, oh right. So you can actually set different. You can set difference for the acceleration rate and the deacceleration rate oh, okay. in both directions. So we'll change one of them, and we'll just see the difference. So this is based on a meters per second per thousand RPM. But again, I'll just put in some default figures. Again, we'll get that to the motor. And again, that's stored into the motor. Okay, we'll do one final setting. We'll change in this mode. Um, we're able to change. We're able to change the fixed speed on the 0 to 10. So we've got our fixed speeds, but right. we can also change the the speed that's available on the 0 to 10 volt, which can be different to what sets the fixed speed. So you're not tied into it. It will always work between a certain range. We can fix it. So what I'll do is, at the moment, the default is 4,000. We'll change up down to 1,000 RPM. And I'll write that to the motor. Okay. So we've now changed that, we've put a number of settings in and we can start testing it to, to, to see what it does. Okay. So first of all, we'll run the 0 to 10 volt, which we've now restricted to 1000 RPM. So if we run this, so we'll run this to start with in a clockwise direction. One thing to note, it's running anti-clockwise on the gearbox. The, the clockwise direction is the output from the motor. Right. So this went through a 90 degree gearbox, which turns the rotation. So just something to be aware of. We look on the screen, we're now at 1000 RPM. 10 volt input, so we're at full speed. Uh, the motor is now restricted to 1000 input, 1000 RPM on the 0 to 10. The fixed speeds um, are still set higher, and we'll also see the acceleration, the acceleration modes now. So if I go straight to speed 3 to get a full example, so this is now has a 4000 RPM maximum speed. Nice gentle, a gentle speed up, yeah. So we're running at full speed, and the same then on, on the big acceleration as well. A gentle yeah. wind down. If I run it in the opposite direction where we've left it, um, full speed. We go straight to full oh, speed. That's, uh, that was trying to jump out my hand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, uh, you can certainly uh, feel all the difference on that. Yeah. And again, the same on the acceleration, it will stop a lot quicker. But we'll do a quick demonstration of a simple positional mode as well. Okay. Uh, again, explained in the guide. Uh, okay, so if we select position mode on the software, again, we'll read. Uh, the motor to see its status and what we can do is now start changing the main drive sets so on this example we set still set at velocity mode we can now change this we'll change in this example to uh, section mode 36 so if we write this down to the motor so it's now select written so the, the main driving mode is now changed from, from velocity mode into position mode again we can just start changing the parameters here so what we'll start with is the distance. Again, as we saw in the demo mode earlier, we can set the number of counts. We know the number of counts per revolution. Um, so again, what we'll do is we'll set it to, to five revolutions this time. 
So again, a nice large number. So we'll set that to 27 million, 786,840. Again, based on the gearbox ratio, it should okay. give us five revolutions. Okay, again, we've still got, um, we've got a max positioning speed, so it sets the maximum speed that we'll run at. That's right. what we saw earlier where it was very slow in the demo mode. Um, we'll increase this up now until we'll run it a little bit quicker. We've still got the acceleration and deacceleration uh, on the clockwise mode and the, the, the counterclockwise as we set on the velocity. So right. it's still all this because we've not powered off or powered down, so it's kept these settings. So we'll leave these the same. So again, we'll have a slow ramp up on clockwise uh, and a quick slow down on, on counterclockwise. It's quite interesting that you can actually have that um, speed curve even when you're concentrating on uh, position as yes. well. That, yeah, again, you want to ramp useful. up in certain modes, you might want a quick start. Yeah. Conveyor belt, for example, you might run a fixed distance, but you want to start slowly and you want to stop slowly and quickly in the middle. So again, it's just a, it's just a function that, that's quite well used. So we've now got the motor set, uh, and that should be all the modes. So we can write that down to the motor, make sure we're all set correctly on there. Okay, and we're now in, in positional mode. So again, we can start playing around with it. So again, if you don't hold it for me. So to start with, we'll just show we can continue to run it in a 0 to 10 volt, so we can speed control. We've got the slow yeah. ramp up. Got that nice uh, slow acceleration. On one direction, if we went the other direction. So we've still got my 0 to 10, so I can run it through there. We can also now start doing the positional mode. So again, we just change the inputs to what's needed. Okay. Again, we can set the direction. So I'm now running one, enable the motor, and this should run in five revolutions. Okay, nice gentle acceleration. So again, it nice and slowly. Still change the speed during the operation, but it will still enable us only to go five revolutions. It's a nice bit of flexibility on that. That's, um, that's pretty cool. There's so we've run five revolutions, five revolution. and we can then run the opposite direction. So again, we need another input. We have now run five revolutions back another direction. Again, we've still got full 0 to 10. We can still change the speed, which is running in the opposite direction. Again, just another a simple mode on here. Yeah. You can take things a lot further. Again, simple positioning mode. You can run it as far as you want in either direction, or you can run it a set position. Again, you continually, can, can continually vary the modes. No. So again, it should be five revolutions. There we go. Fantastic. Yeah, and that's yeah, just a couple of really simple examples uh, of what the motor is capable of. Well, thanks, Simon. Thanks for demonstrating. Uh, the drive studio there and uh, as I understand it those demonstrations that you've just shown us um, people can uh, do that themselves from, from what's in the booklet. Is yes that yeah, they're all listed step-by-step -step guides on these demonstrations as well as an overview of what else is possible. Okay great um, so perhaps you can just tell us maybe one or two other advantages of using uh, this studio kit? Um, what, what? Well it, it comes initially there's six kits each with a different motor gearbox um, beyond that, we have a, a large range uh, of, of different motors, larger motors, different gearbox types, different gearbox ratios. Uh, again, all of which will be available, and all of them can be used with the kit itself. So you can expand the kit once you've got the startup. You can expand it with a. And you can use range. all of them with this. All of them are interfaced. Yeah, all of our K4 products uh, are compatible with the drive okay. studio. Right, well, so that's also a useful uh, thing, bit of uh, interoperability. So uh, good. Um, so one thing I did notice was that was um, quite a jumpy motor, so it's obviously pretty strong. Perhaps yes. you can tell me a little bit about the kind of power densities you've got there. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the key functions, or the, the key benefits of, of these products, um, with our brush and CT motors, is that the high power density. Um, it's up to you probably two to, two to three times uh, as powerful as comparable products on the market. Okay. So it's one of the key selling points, is the, is the size of the product. Um, so, um, apart from the power density, what other kind of benefits would our would customers get gain from uh, using these? Um, again, high efficiency. It's a very efficient motor, um, and the functionality that's, that's possible with it. Not only do you get the out of the box functionality, uh, the key point from from the K4 range of our products is, is the drive studio, the ability to constantly change the parameters. So one motor um, is very versatile and suits a, a huge range of applications. Um, so you can you can. You can, you can can continue to change and customise what you need. Okay, so um, 
So there's a large range of applications that it's suitable for. Um, what, what sort of things uh, do you envisage? It can be used for, for almost anything. I mean, typical applications we see um, would be conveyors, access barriers, um, could be medical pumps, uh, even golf trolleys. I mean, we supply into a huge range of products. Uh, and I think that's the, the benefit of this kit is, is we can get it out to loads of different applications. People can find where this motor could be used. Yeah. And I suppose the other thing is you've got a lot of um, applications perhaps where precision uh, movement is quite mm. an important thing yes. as well. I mean, that uh, was, was brought out in that demo quite Yeah, the, the logistics side, barriers, you know, things need to start and stop in the right yeah. place. You know, things have to yeah. work, things have to be reliable. Um, so, um, who do you see as your key customers for this kit? Any engineer that's, that's got a, the need for a drive solution. Um, as we've seen, the, the product is very versatile, can be used across a, a huge range of applications. So, if someone's got a need to move something, then uh, we've got a motor that should suit. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you very much for coming down and uh, showing us the K4 system drive kit. Thank no you. Thanks for your time.